Hi everyone, I'm Keegan Marazzi, a Partner Solutions Architect at AWS, where my job is to discover, develop, and deliver solutions with our partners. Today I'm joined here with Joe Carlson. He's a Senior Cloud Developer Advocate at Cloud Query. Say hi, Joe. Hi. By the way, that is a lot of clouds all at once. Um, my job is basically just helping people get visibility into their AWS environments. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of cloud asset inventories, why you might need one, and what makes a great cloud asset inventory. So Joe, take us away with our current scenario. Yeah. So Keegan, I know that you have your AWS environment right now, and you probably have like 847 different resources running across six different accounts. And I know this for a fact because I just made all those numbers up. But the scary part is, Keegan, you probably couldn't tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Uh, and if you've been building out cloud infrastructure in AWS for any amount of time, you know, spinning up brand new EC2 instances, creating new S3 buckets or decommissioning them, or someone set up a new prototype project and forgot to spin down the RDS database, somewhere along the way there, you may have lost track of a few of the resources that you actually have. So the first question we should be asking is, what is a cloud asset? And as you see on the top left, our formal definition is infrastructure that contains resources like compute, mm. storage, networking, security, and everything else from networking configurations to uh, different VPC configurations. It, it really can depend on every different account. And you yeah. can think of it as every setup or every part of your infrastructure that keeps your application running. So whether it's a, a engineer's test account or whether it's a production account that's actually running the application, all of these are components that come together um, which consist of cloud assets. So mm -hmm. Joe, with all these different types of assets, how do we organize and structure them in a way that's actually productive for use? Yeah. Well, like cloud, there's lots of different components of a, like what we consider to be an asset. But an inventory is just a collection of all those different resources. It's a centralized database of all of your cloud assets that you're managing all in one place. And cloud asset inventories are built by collecting data from AWS's APIs and then storing that in some sort of database or some sort of format that can make that accessible to other people or other systems. AWS actually provides a ton of APIs for services out of the box. So EC2s describe inst instances or S3s list buckets. Uh, these APIs expose detailed configuration data about your AWS cloud. Um, your inventory if you're building one out, is made up of systemically, you know, making calls out to these API endpoints, extracting that data for all those resources and all that metadata, doing some mapping on those metadata resources so they're mapped correctly, so the right metadata and the right tags are on the right resource, uh, and then pulling them together in a queryable format. So, um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about why you may need a cloud asset inventory. Yeah, so um, I've worked with companies that struggle with scaling their cloud asset inventories. And uh, as a solutions architect, I think there's three main structural reasons that align with the AWS well-architected framework um, that identify why you should make one. So the first is going to be security, right? So at AWS, we have a saying called secure by design. Mm -hmm. And without a comprehensive inventory, you can't effectively implement good security controls or detect misconfigurations mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a clear view of all of your assets. The second is going to be cost optimization. Similar to the security pillar, uh, visibility into your resource utilization will help you identify when you're not using idling resources or mm. when you're underutilizing other user, other resources. Mm. So by having a clear, well-rounded view of all your assets, you're able to optimize on costs that you can use better or you don't need at all. Mm. And finally is operational excellence. So maintaining an accurate inventory is key to adapting to change and also being future-proof, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But being able to change and having a good understanding of the assets in your environment will help you adapt to changes. So this leaves me with a question. Um, given that we have these structures and we have these benefits of a cloud asset inventory, can you explain a little bit what the capabilities are of a good cloud asset inventory? Yeah, I think it can be broken down into four main pillars that every effective cloud asset inventory has. And we know this from analyzing hundreds of different 
environments ranging from small all the way up to massive. Um, and here's what we think works at scale. There's four key pillars, and we're going to break these down. But the four pillars are discovery and collection, relationship mapping, change tracking, and querying and analysis. So let's start with the first pillar, huh, Keegan? Awesome. So this is your data ingestion engine. Um, everything falls apart if you don't have good data discovery. Mm. So this comes from making sure that all your API configurations are sending data to your inventory, making sure that they're organized and that you're able to capture uh, new services if uh, they become available. Uh, just making sure that you have a good track of all the different resources that are there and that no specific assets are left out. Yeah. Um, as we mentioned before, making sure that all your cloud assets are in your inventory is key to make sure you're able to make the best of it. Oh, um, that's perfect. Well said. Pillar two, relationship mapping. And this is where I personally think it gets interesting, but this is where you're mapping different metadata to other to the resources, right? You want to map your security groups to your EC2, get those relationships, track VPC connectivity paths through transit gateway architectures, and maybe even understand IAM permission boundaries. What, what do they have access and do you have a holistic view of that a perimeter? You might also need to correlate things like your GitHub or GitLab repositories and code changes with your EC2 instances. Like what code changes led to your EC2 instances is spinning up or terminating prematurely. I don't know, but your cloud config data has that, especially when you can combine that with your code. Um, your asset inventory at that time can become the central nervous system, connecting your cloud resources to your entire operations. Awesome, awesome. So that brings us to our third pillar, which is called change tracking. Ooh. So when something breaks at 2 a.m., you need to know what changed and when it happened. Your asset inventory must be able to contain a clear audit trail of when changes are made within your AWS accounts and who made them. So you're able to remediate when needed. So mm -hmm. for the change tracking pillar, you, you must be able to identify different patterns, whether that's uh, utilization patterns or whether that's accessing patterns. Um, you're always gonna need to connect with the different services like Amazon CloudWatch that provides logs, for your services in order in order to maintain relevancy with uh, your AWS accounts and the overall health of your environment. So that takes us to the fourth pillar. Querying and analysis. So you may spend months bringing together all these different cloud configuration details and metadata onto one database, um, but if like your security team comes to you and they discover a new vulnerability in a Lambda build, and if you can't quickly identify all the affected functions across all of your accounts, then it's useless. Um, if you can't identify zombie architecture that you're paying for but not using, that's a problem, right? It, the goal should be able to construct a system that is easy to access that data, analyze it, and actually like get value from that. Um, without a way for people to be able to ask common questions like, show me all my untagged resources on my AWS environment, your inventory tool is just gonna be there for monitoring and not gonna be a part of your core part of operational intelligence for building and scaling out your AWS environment. Okay, great. We got through a lot there, um, but let's do a quick recap. So remember, cloud assets encompass everything within your entire AWS infrastructure. That includes your compute, storage, network, security, and everything else like metadata, tag data, etc. cetera. Uh, and your cloud asset inventory is a complete catalog of all those resources across your environment, all in one place that, that is easy to query and analyze it. We've also covered four core pillars of what makes a great cloud asset inventory. Those are discovery and collection, relationship mapping, change tracking, and querying and analysis. Um, it's all about leveraging the knowledge you can get inside of your cloud asset inventory to build faster, safer, and more scalable apps on AWS. A cloud ass inventory is foundational to everything else you need to do in the cloud. So in our next video, we're going to be uh, walking through design considerations you should take when you're building a cloud asset inventory for AWS. Some of the architectural decisions, some of the services you may use, and implementation patterns that we find actually work in production. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Joe, for coming on and telling us about cloud asset inventories.